So Cam didn't apologize, but he says he could have handled his press conference after the Super Bowl a little better. We'll share those comments with you in React after the break. You're watching First Take, presented by Bass Pro Shops. Almost three months since the Super Bowl 50 loss to the Denver Broncos, Cam Newton has had some time to reflect on how he handled the post-game press conference. In the latest edition of Ebony Magazine, Cam admitted he could have handled the situation differently. Quote, the truth is I represent something way bigger than myself. I'm doing it for my fans and family, and I felt like I let them down. I just wasn't ready to talk. Was I mad? Hell yeah. But there could have been a better way to control it, and that's why I think having more time would have helped. Stephen A., are you surprised by these quotes? Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, Cam's a good dude. I mean, we had to get on him because when you're dabbing all year long when you're winning, but then the second you lose, you react like that. That's what this was about. Certainly, if he had reacted that way and had not been dabbing all year long, folks would have still said something. But it was the fact that he had been celebrating at the expense of others all year long. But then when it was his turn to take that, he didn't do a great job of it. But that's the only thing that we could say about Cam. He's a fantastic player. He's a role model. He's a good person. Uh, he's doing charitable work in Charlotte. You know, uh, he's been doing that all of these years. He's continuing to do it now. There's nothing really bad to say about this brother. He's a superstar and he's a really great guy. He just had a bad moment. He just has to accept the fact that he had a bad moment, which it appears he has in what he told Ebony Magazine. So I'm happy for him. Yep. Now we move forward. I agree with everything you just said. Even less than you, I, I had no issue with how he handled the post game. I, I hate to see him get beaten down by this. I hate to see him ultimately have to sort of give in to the public pressure to apologize for this. Mm -hmm. I liked what he said, where he said, it's hard, I'm paraphrasing the quote exactly, but th that he's saying, you don't understand how your heart is pumping with embarrassment and with the anxiety of handling. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Skip. Okay, go ahead. I thought you wanted go to ahead. say I'm sorry. Okay, but No, go ahead. But, but your heart's pumping with the anxiety at this moment. He'd never been in this moment before. And I'm not going to condemn this kid because he's still got a lot of kid in him. This was a learning experience. And, and I thought it was just fine because I liked his quote the next day. You know, show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. That is true. Well, the only thing that I wanted to say to you, Skip, is that there's a reason we took it differently. And it's the black-white dynamic, yeah. to be okay. quite honest with you. As a young black man, who is a role model and a superstar. I knew what kind of heat he was going to take because he did that. Yeah, you're right. And what I was upset about was the fact that by doing so, it was going to give the haters an excuse to ignore all he had done mm -hmm. great and live off of all the negative things they had said about him. And he gave them ammunition to do that. That's why I didn't like it, because it. I didn't want him to have to go through that. With you. Got it. Jared Goff and Carson Wentz are expected to be the first two picks in tonight's NFL draft. Todd McShay released his last big board, and he has Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, the 10th and 11th ranked players. How concerned should the Rams and Eagles be on using the top picks on these quarterbacks for that? We welcome Herm Edwards to the desk. Herm, we need you here. Well... You're concerned, obviously, if these guys are busts because you've traded away uh, and mortgaged your future. Um, but in the National Football League, you don't have a long future unless you have a quarterback. So you have to understand that. I think both these young men are, are good players. Uh, you would say that they are probably not ready uh, at this point uh, to be inserted in the lineup. Uh, you look at the Rams, uh, it seems like they're going with golf. Um, he's probably in a better place. Uh, than Wentz. When you look at the Rams football team, how it's built, what they're going to ask this guy to do. Um, reminds me a lot of Alex Smith in this sense. If he can play like Alex Smith, he'll have a long career because of the team that he plays for, the Rams. And the fact they want to run the ball with Gurley. This team only threw 11 touchdown passes last year. If he can throw about 20 touchdown passes a year, don't turn the ball over. They'll play steady defense. The runner will score anywhere between 10 and 15 touchdowns. 
they have a chance to win a lot of football games. They were a 7-9 football team last year, uh, lost three games by a total of 12 points. So I think they look at him that way. We're not going to put too much on his plate. Now, Wentz is in a diff different situation. He goes to a place where this whole football team is being restructured. When you think about it defensively, they went go from a 3-4 to a 4-3. They have some pieces, but they're not all in place. They have an offensive head coach in Doug Peters that, that basically wants to run a West Coast type of offense, wants to run the power. They're going to run the football a little bit more than they have done in the past. Uh, they got a young quarterback. They were hoping that Sam Bradford was going to be the bridge, but it doesn't look like that. I don't know if Sam Bradford's last the whole year. I think he'll be gone by June. This is my personal opinion. We'll see. Uh, then uh, Chase Daniels will have to be that guy, unless Wentz just blows him out of the water. And all of a sudden, you look at him every day and you watch him in the preseason and say, you know what, let's put the guy in there and let's let him play. So I think both young players are in different situations. And, uh, you know, no different than last year. We knew that Jameis Winston and Mariota, now their grades are higher. We, we, we had higher expectations. But they both went to teams that were maybe in transition. And they, they, they survived it. They actually survived they it. Did. Can these guys survive it physically, but more than that, mentally? A lot of pressure on the kid in Philly because it's in Philadelphia. Rams? <laughs> A lot of pressure will be taken off that kid because they got Gurley back there. And, and they got a team that's pretty competitive in the division. Not saying Philadelphia can't because the Dallas, you know, Dallas Cowboys were hurt last year. They'll be competitive. The Giants will be better. Washington is Washington. You know, they won the division. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing unfolds. Stephen A. Well, I, you know, when we talk about the concerns of, of the Rams and the Eagles in terms of their picks, uh, uh, Coach Herm Edwards, you before you came on for this segment, you, you said, where, where, where does Jared Goff play? University of California. Cat. Yeah. Um, 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 is there a particular quarterback in the NFL right now who's elite that comes from there? Oh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers. What's his name? Aaron Rodgers. That bad? Is that bad, He's man? a bad man. And, and, and you know what? Bad You'll man? like this one. I'm going to show you how bad he is. He's the only one out of the 16 now. Well, we'll just say 15 because Goff hadn't been drafted yet that actually won a Super Bowl. Right. They have been dressed so, out of camp. We, they, 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 I, I, just, I, just, I knew that, Coach. I just wanted you to say it. Yeah, it's a bad man. special to me. No doubt. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bad man. 24th overall in 2005. We understand that here's the difference. Aaron Rodgers came into the league. Forget the cushion, being able to sit behind Brett Favre, learn, etc. He also came into the league knowing that he deserved better than what he got in terms of falling so low in that draft. This guy, Jared Goff, may go number one overall. Yes. Now, I've got a friend uh, that, you know, that, that met Jared Goff, okay? Um, <laughs> and he was with his son. And his son said, Dad, you in better shape than him. <laughs> because Jared Goff looked tall. He, he was just tall, uh, but he looked a bit fluffy. That was the word that they <laughs> used. Fluffy. Didn't seem in great shape, etc. We've watched this guy, and what we see is an individual that threw five interceptions against Utah, but pro-style offense, some of the things he's capable of doing, running running an offense in the NFL, etc. There are upsides, there are downsides. When we talk about athletic ability, arm strength, etc., we look at Carson Wentz. So there are questions about Jared Goff. When you combine that with the fact that he's going to go number one overall in all likelihood, and he's going to be in a market like Los Angeles where they lose interest quick, I think the odds are stacked against him. And I find myself believing that when it comes to the Eagles and the Rams, they're taking a quarterback because that's what they need most. And so as a result, they moved up to take one of these guys as opposed to thinking that either one of them is franchise caliber material. Mm. By the way, just quick point of order here. Yes. Aaron Rodgers, or Arrogant Rodgers as I now <laughs> call him, is three and five in his last eight playoff games. Just for the record, I just want to throw that in just to keep this. He's a in Super Bowl champion. Yes. He's a Super Bowl champion. Ages ago. Now, oh, by the way, skip, 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 hold on. 
There's another number I want to throw out there. You see the three and five number you just threw at me? Yeah. Do you know, even though it's a three and five record since he won that Super Bowl, mm -hmm. those three victories are still one more player victory than Tony Romo has had in this, his 10 this years? This is not about Tony Romo, who went I'm just undrafted. Saying. I'm undrafted. just saying. Wow. I'm just saying. He's done pretty well I'm for just saying. undrafted, wouldn't the you say? The man's got two player victories okay. in 10 now, years. Now, back to your quote. This was almost akin to the anonymous scout quotes that you hate this time of year. You have now quoted a friend of yours, like his kid or so, saying that. <laughs> I was that, joking that about it. It was a joke. Fluffy? Okay, it, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just kidding, actually. But but I thought it was funny that that okay. he 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 might be fluffy. I don't know. Yes. I, like I, I don't know fluffy actually, but, but that's okay. You do. All right. So, Stop it. So coach, I got to bring it back. Yep. The point here is that a Todd McShay that I have high regard for we both do. has yes. ranked these players and he's saying that there are nine players on his board who are more valuable to him in this draft than either of these two quarterbacks. Yeah. And moreover, yes. he's got Goff ranked one slot below Wentz. Right. So he's saying to the LA Rams that, hey, not only are you taking an overrated quarterback, you're taking the, the worst of the two overrated quarterbacks, okay, right. just for the record. Right. Now, I, I get what you say. You could put a lot of these quarterbacks in that Rams offense with the Rams defense. They might do okay. Yeah. Paxton Lynch could probably do okay. Connor Cook would do okay, sure. right? right. I, I think Cardale Jones could do okay, okay, right? But, but my point is, you've been doing this a long time, playing coaching. I've been covering this for a long, long time. In all my time covering drafts, I have never, ever seen a combined gamble like th these combined yeah. gambles where they bet the ranch to go up for two can miss quarterbacks because we're not talking to Stephen A and I riffed uh, to start the show about all the the sort of can't miss quarterbacks that went at the top of the draft starting with John Elway and you know we can go all the way to Aikman and Cam Newton and Andrew Luck we just go on and on Michael Vick all these quarterbacks who were taken high we we knew they were going to be you know Peyton obviously they were all going to be pretty to very good. Yes. And we just knew it. We yes. just knew. It would just be a matter of, will they be this good or this great? Right. But with these two, I, I don't know, man. I just don't know. I, I think they're they're iffy. Well, we all sit here yeah. and say that. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And, and, you know, last year, it turned out good. Yeah. Because... Winston, oh no, those two. I, I, and, 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 but but we, we said it. We, we say that. But every year we know that it's very difficult. Rookie quarterback coming in the league. How... How do they handle yep. the mental aspect of it? Okay. Dealing with losing. Okay. Dealing with turning the ball over. That's the critical part. How, how did Peyton Manning, when he threw 27 interceptions his first year, how did he deal with that? Okay. Those are the things. Andrew Luck comes in, he takes a team from 4-12, and 12, and he takes them to 12-4. and four. We don't see that a whole lot. Robert Griffin had that flash. He comes in here and, wow, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. well, that, that, that's what you're gambling on. Yep. We don't know. We, we don't know. That is, there's, there's no science to it. We don't know. And then you don't know for a couple years even, so. Got to hope. We shall see. Herm, thank you so much. My Appreciate pleasure. You. Where's, Steve, where's my man Stephen A. today? Where you at, young man? New York City. Oh, boy. He's in the apple. He's, he's in the town. Painting it red. My town. Cubs, Hayes. <laughs>